What's up Backgammon fans? This is Mark Olsen from Backgammon Galaxy and in this video we're gonna investigate the cheating accusations in the recent uh, UK Open 2022. Um, I'm gonna show you the clip here because actually it was in the live stream match on Backgammon Galaxy's YouTube channel. So we have a lot of video information here to whether Nikolai Asinte was actually cheating or not. Um, I'm going to show you this footage, but first I'm just going to show you the the actual ruling that now came from the UK Bagamon Federation. And they say that here is the 9th of September, the ruling committee has decided, um, and whatever it says here, dear, St dear Stephen Tim, thank you for your patience over such a sensitive issue. I think Stephen Tim are the tournament directors and they're receiving a letter from the ruling committee whom I'm not sure who's in it, but this is the letter, what they say. Uh, it was a unanimous decision by all three of them. The decision of the ruling committee is that Nikolai Asinta shall be disqualified from the tournament for severe infringement of the rules by illegal manipulation of a position to gain an unfair advantage. As such, he shall receive no prize, whether money or otherwise, or trophy. The final match of the tournament shall be played at a time and venue to be arranged preferably live, but online if necessary between Eric Westbrook and Brandon, Brandon Burgess before the end of December 2022. If there's anything that needs further clarification, do let us know. Regards, Julia, on behalf of the members of the ruling committee. Uh, again, I'm not exactly sure who else is in the ruling committee other than Julia, and I... I haven't heard so so if you guys know you can let it, put a comment below and let us know who who's who was in the ruling committee even if it maybe it's not publicly known who was in the ruling committee nevertheless let's go and see the footage here see what happens so the score is 5-2 to 11 to Nikolai Asante who's a Romanian backgammon player playing against Brandon Burgess from Ireland and let's just see this game because it happens in the third role of the game Okay, I'm gonna pause here. So what just happened was that uh, Nikolai apparently dropped his cup while he was rolling the dice. Let's just go back and see it again. And notice all the little detail that just happened in a short second there. I'm gonna, okay, so look at this roll first. Brendan plays a 5-1, he brings a guy down from the midpoint and he splits, and he splits the back checkers here. He made a split with, with a back checker. Oh, that's a little bit of bad. Here he split the back checker and he brought a builder down. So now it's Nikolai's turn. And notice that we have the player cam up here. So I'm going to play it a couple of times. Notice first we look at how the dice and actually rolled out. And then I'm going to replay it and I want you to have take a close look at Nikolai and see if you can detect whether he did this on purpose or not. That wasn't the we haven't even seen the cheating part yet. Okay, I'm gonna play it again. Last time. Okay, uh I think it looks as if Nikolai uh, drops it uh, not on purpose. Like he, there's a, he's even like shaking from, uh, he's like shaking from uh, the fact that he dropped the cop. Uh, it might be a very elaborate act to drop the cop like this, but uh, to me it looks like it could just be an accident, like an, a random accident. 
Then a couple of other details here. First off, even if it was on purpose, what would the gain be? Well, some say that if you throw the dice on the cup, uh, the cup on the on the playing surface, then if it's a good roll, you quickly play it, and if it's a bad roll, you say, "Oh, that was a mistake. That's an illegal roll. I pick up the dice again and re-roll." But the thing is, like, it doesn't really work that way because there's going to be a ruling, so you can't really game the system like this. Maybe you could do it in a money game where you're playing late at night against a inexperienced opponent or something like this but you can't do it at the, in the semi-finals in a live streamed match with a ruling committee and that so already there I don't think there's anything really to gain by doing such a trick but that's not even the cheating part it, it comes later on that's just the first detail of this sequence of interesting events the next thing was that Brandon did a mistake here he broke the rules he touched Nikolai's dice and he didn't just touch it he actually changed the one die to a five instead of a double one. So if we go back here again. Oh, look, it was double aces. And Brendan immediately touches the dice. He's not supposed to do that. He's breaking the rules here. Now, usually you have a rule that says if the cup touches the playing surface, it's not a valid roll. And the reason is that you don't want, you need a clean roll has to be, you have to shake the dice and you have to throw out the dice. That's how you eliminate any kind of dice manipulation by tricksters using their fingers to manipulate the dice. So the cup cannot touch the surface. However, usually the rule only says that the cannot, cup cannot touch the surface in the dice roll. This is an edge case scenario because the, the dice cup didn't touch the surface while he was rolling. He literally dropped the cup after he threw the dice. So now we're gonna see uh, actually the real, what well, what then will happen is that they will call over, Brandon will call over a ruling committee to make a decision whether the role, role was valid or not. We're gonna see that. And it's actually, the, eventually the ruling committee ruled that the rule, uh, the role was valid because the dice didn't touch the actual, the dice cup didn't touch the actual dice. So it had no influence on the outcome of the dice. So that, that required the ruling committee to make that ruling. And I think it's a fair enough ruling. You, know, you could also say, well, the dice cup touched the surface. It doesn't count no matter what the role is. But they chose to say, okay, the dice cup didn't actually touch the dice. So it didn't interfere with the dice roll. So we make a ruling and the dice roll stands. Fair enough. But what happened here? Let, I just paused it here because notice what happens the moment Brendan touches the die. Oh, look at Nikolai. He's like, what are you doing? You're not going to steal my good roll from me here. Everybody knows double aces is a great roll. Nikolai quickly plays the double aces. He quickly plays the double aces. And why is this uh, relevant? Well, he's in his mind, he's, he thinks that his opponent is about to cheat him off of a great roll. So he hurries up to play it just to make sure that there's no doubt that this was a double aces. So let's just actually put this position in because I think this is very relevant information. I don't know any of these players. I don't know how they play. I've never seen them play before. All I know is from this video clip we have in front of us. But let's just put up this position here. Let's see here because Nikolai just made a very big blunder. When you get double aces in a situation like this where... Okay, here you go. I'm going to do this. I'm going to make this a little bit bigger so you guys can see the board. So when you have, when you roll double aces early in the game, it's completely standard that you bring two checkers down and you make the five point. The remaining two can sometimes be played from eight to seven. That's correct if your opponent hasn't split the back checkers. If there are still two checkers on the 24 point, then that's the move. You make the five point and you make the seven point. If your opponent has made a split with the back checkers, you don't make the seven point because now you're going to leave yourself to a direct shot. Again, I'm, I don't know how uh, these guys play, but assuming that it's the semifinals, they're probably reasonably good players. And I think most people, most players at a certain level, knows that you're not supposed to make the seven point after your opponent has split the back checkers. It's a pretty big blunder, actually. Let's see uh, how big of a blunder this is. Uh, if you play, it's not even in the top five. We have to go all the way down here. Let's just do it on 
xg plus. Let's see how big of an error this is. Uh, here it is, it's 150 blunder, it's a huge blunder. It's not even in the top five. Is it better than, it's not even here, it's, 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 it's not even the top five. It's like the sixth or seventh best roll or something like this. It's a horrible play. And Nikolai probably played it being super confused that his opponent just touched his dice and he just dropped his cup. And he was thinking that he was getting cheated out of the roll. This is completely plausible because I don't think a, a strong player would make this play when your opponent spit the back checkers. So I don't think Nikolai is even perceiving the board clearly here. I think he's confused and he's just quickly playing the double aces before the double aces get stolen away from him or stolen away from him. Uh, the best play would have been to make something like uh, like this where you don't leave any shots or even you can even do this if you want to keep your uh, back checkers split. There, there are plenty of options but you definitely don't play like this and leave four blots in the position and leave a direct shot. It's a terrible, terrible play. And I don't think that Nikolai would make that play actually if he had a little bit more time to think about it. Um, so that I think that's the clue number one to why, to Nikolai's mindset here. So now we're gonna proceed and we're gonna see what uh, then is to follow. So now they're discussing what's going on. They have to call over a ruling committee to decide whether the, the role is valid or not. And that's completely fair. That's the right thing to do. So now we have the ruling committee coming over. Uh, I'm not exactly sure who these guys are. Now they're getting, they're telling the situation. We're fasting forward a little bit. Here we have, I know that this is Peter Bennett. And I think he's part of the ruling committee or tournament staff. So they're deciding now. They, and then they find out this brilliant idea that uh, it, it's a live stream match. So we can just go back on the video and see it. So luckily we have the video of the situation. So it, this is nice because we have this situation on, on tape and the ruling committee have perfect information. They can go back and then they eventually they decide that the role stands because the cop didn't touch the dice. But it's a controversial ruling because it could go either way, actually. And I think either way would is completely fair. I don't have a strong preference of either ruling. Uh, nevertheless, that's the, that's the ruling from the committee and the game now must go on. So we ha still have more people. We have four people coming over here discussing with the players over the board. They're discussing, they're discussing. The players are actually shaking hands here at some point, Brendan and uh, Nikolai, and uh, they're getting ready to start. Okay, I think we're almost there. Okay, here we are. Uh, okay, another little detail. This is the action point. Look at uh, Nikolai's clock after the situation. It's down to 15 minutes and, and 44 seconds. His clock had been running this entire time. He just had five minutes off the clock. Nobody stopped the clock, N not himself. It's his own responsibility, not his opponent, uh, not the rulers. <laughs> and he didn't get this time back. So that's one little detail that Nikolai was actually cheated of five minutes off the clock here and nobody noticed it. Okay, so now the, to the, the, the big uh, situation here. So we remember it was the fourth roll of the game Brendan had just split with 5-1. He just split the back checkers with 5-1. Also, Nikolai had just misplayed double aces in a way that you would only play if the back checkers were not split. Let's see what happens now. They start the clock. Oh, did you see it? What just happened to that checker there? <laughs> it went up here. Let's go back. Oh. Oh, going back. Look at the board. Whoop. Now look at the player cam up here. Look at Nikolai. Whoop. Okay. That is an illegal move. You just move your opponent's jaggers <laughs> into another position. But look what happens now when they start the play. 
So the commentator noticed it immediately. Brandon didn't notice that his checker was now in another position. Um, uh, what's his name? Peter Bennett, who's up, just made a ruling. One part of the ruling committee, it literally watching the board, didn't see it. This guy, I don't know who it is, didn't see it. This guy, I don't know who it, didn't see it. We have four, ple four people watching the board and a live stream with 100 live viewers watching it. Nikolai didn't make any effort to hide this che so-called cheating. Let's go back and see it again. Let's see it again. Nikolai literally leans forward, changes the checker, and <laughs> leans back again. <laughs> This was the action that uh, the UK Open Ruling Committee just banned Brent, uh, Nikolai for. And he, they took away his prizes. Nikolai won the entire tournament. They took away his prizes. I think it's like 10,000 pounds or something like this. I'm not, I'm not sure how big the prize is. You may correct me in the chat if, I, if I'm wrong. But it's a significant amount. It was a big tournament. And the prize board, by the way, it's an Earth board from Backgammon Galaxy. And the trophy. And he's being discredited as a cheater. Is it plausible that Nikolai just made a normal human mistake by correcting a position that he thought it wasn't like this? Of course, the right thing to do when you see your opponent having put the checkers in the wrong position is to notify your opponent. Not, you, you shouldn't start touching your opponent's checkers, especially out of turn. You're breaking the rules, just like Brendan broke the rules by touching uh, Nikolai's dice. You're not supposed to do that. Nevertheless, human players make errors all the time. <laughs> Even grandmasters do it. When I think of all the times that I've corrected my opponent's illegal moves, and I had to break that down into either me notifying them verbally or just simply just moving their checker back. It's probably 50-50. I probably do it myself. I probably just move them back if I think it's wrong. I expect my opponent to see what I'm doing and correct me if I'm wrong. I'm probably going to say something while I'm doing it. But these guys are not even grandmasters. They're amateur players. It happens all the time. Um, there is a rule. Uh, this rule about legal and illegal moves. Usually the rule is that if, when the that the opponent has one role to correct it. If he rolls the dice, play a move, presses the clock, now the illegal move from previously, it stands. You have to continue the match as it is. You cannot go two moves back and correct an illegal move. Then there are some tournaments that plays with something called legal move rule, which is, in my opinion is a stupid rule because it puts the onus on the, on the guy who didn't make an illegal move. And the onus is that he has to tell the, his opponent that he made an illegal move, whether it was to his advantage or disadvantage. Which means that now the guy who didn't make an illegal move, if he doesn't catch his opponent's illegal move, he will be a cheater. I don't like that rule. I think it's silly. I think it's not your responsibility to make sure your opponent is making legal moves. That should be the opponent's move, uh, the responsibility. It is your responsibility, though. You, you, you're not getting cheated. And I think Brendan here, he was asleep. Uh, he, he should have noticed that his checker was here, you know, and so should, or it's just, I don't know how it's possible. Everybody missed it. Everybody missed it. And, um, but, but Brendan was probably confused as well, because this is a hugely confusing situation. I can tell you this much. Every time you play backgammon and you get slightly distracted, especially in high level like this, it could be like a cell phone ringing three tables down or uh, whatever, somebody yelling something in the other end of the room, anything that breaks your concentration, your blunder potential goes up by probably 10,000%. In a position where you might have had 1% chance of making a blunder, now you have 10% chance of making a blunder. It's like that, or it's even worse, more, it's like there's literally, your blunder potential goes up tremendously. And this situation was hugely confusing. So both players are confused. They're not focused on the game. And I think that's how Brandon could not notice that his checker was just moved. Uh, I think Nikolai just uh, 
in his mind the the, the back checkers were, were was like were like this all the time because that's why he played the the double aces like the, like this you know he, he didn't have time to scan it he was being distracted by dropping his cup and Brendan touching his dice and he didn't want to get cheated out of his double aces so he quickly moved something so in his mind it made sense that the the checkers were there but again Brendan could simply just have corrected it he could have just said hey no uh, the checker was actually here uh, and then Bre Nikolai would probably said oh really are you sure and then they probably had to go back again on the video and then confirm that the checker was here because this was again the two players had a completely different perception of the position at least that's what it looks like to me I think that's the case here and I think if you ban somebody from cheating you better have a strong case that they did it with intent because human makes mistakes all the time. And equity-wise, this was not a big cheat. The score is 5-2 to 11. He lost five minutes on the clock in the process. Uh, it's the fourth roll of the game. It's not a big cheating uh, moment, this moment. Um, are there any more details? Yeah, one more thing. There's another clip here. There's another clip I want to show you. This is from one of the earlier matches, also in the Masters final rounds between Claudia Gunnert from the Netherlands versus Jason Champion from the United Kingdom. By the way, what a name. What a backgammon name, huh? Jason Champion. But uh, let's look at this sequence here, what happened. So Claudia rolled a 3-2. She has a 5 prime, slotted a 6 prime. She didn't get to cover the six prime and there's still one guy down here behind her prime and Jason is completely crunched and Jason is leading 10 1 to 11 in what seems to be the Crawford game since there are no cubes here see what happens here Claudia moves a three corrects it to a two and moves another two and presses the clock Claudia just made an illegal move this was much better than if he had, she had played the legal move, putting both checkers here, because that would have been very inflexible. So Claudia just gained a lot by this legal move, just like you could say Nikolai gained a lot by moving this pip right here. And this is a late game position. Equity-wise, I haven't checked it, but I think equity-wise, it's probably in the same ballpark, how, how much you gained by making this illegal move. And Jason didn't notice it. He rolls a double six and immediately punishes poor Claudia. Should Claudia also be banned and taken away her trophy from cheating? I don't think so. I don't think Claudia cheated on purpose. This was just a normal human error and it happens so often for all players. For some players less experienced, they even make several illegal moves per match. Just because Bagamon is difficult. It's complicated. So hunting people down for making illegal moves is of course we cannot do that we have to be able to show malintent yeah so i, I think uh, unless there's some information here that i don't that i was missing i think that the going back to nikolai's match here i think the ruling from the ruling committee is yeah disgraceful i i don't understand uh Maybe I'm missing some information and please let me know in the comments uh, that there is a, this people who argue that there's a distinction when you're touching your opponent's checkers. That's much worse than touching your own checkers like Claudia did. Uh, but nevertheless, it was still categorized as an illegal move. Equity wise, it's comparable. Both was probably unintended. Um, the only thing you could argue for Nikolai was whether he dropped the cup, cup or, I mean, there are two things. that he, This could have been with malintent. But I think it's highly unlikely because why would you cheat in a situation like this where everybody is watching, live, you're being live streamed, it's an unimportant score, it's an unimportant moment in the game, you're losing five minutes on the clock. We just had playback video to make a ruling which means that everybody knows this is being recorded. It makes no sense <laughs> to blatantly cheat here. And he makes no effort to hide it. He literally just, let's see it again. Oh, let's see it again here. 
Ja, yeah, you change it, go back. <laughs> yeah, so, oh, the uh, focus is a little bit bad. Uh, sometimes the focus goes off. The, so I think there's a discussion there whether could he have mastermind this while the confusion was going on, saying to himself, planning that, oh, in the last moment, I'm just going to change a pip there. It's possible. I just think it's highly unlikely because even the most skilled cheater wouldn't cheat in a spot like this where you have all the spotlight on you you know and it's not even yeah it's uh the, the other case is to say that whether nikolai was trying to sh cheat in the beginning when he dropped the cup i don't know it could be that that was his cheat but that's not the cheat he was being uh, he was being banned for it was to quote unquote gain an unfair advantage by moving your opponent's checkers um, I don't think he even dropped the cop on purpose. We can let's go back and see that again as well. It was around here. So look at Nikolai up here. I'm just gonna go. Okay, here it comes. Okay, look at Nikolai now. I mean, <laughs> it, it's not professionals playing here. That's for sure. Uh, they're experienced players, but they're not they're not professionals. Which is fair enough. It's completely normal at a backgammon tournament. I think that's why we have to accept uh, human errors. It didn't look like to me that Nikolai uh, dropped that cup on purpose. But even if he did, that wasn't the quote unquote cheating or ankle that he was being uh, accused of and banned for. I think taking away his first prize money-wise and trophy-wise and reputation-wise, calling him a cheater is, a, is an extremely hard uh, ruling by the... And I think they're completely off, to be honest. It's not my opinion here. I wouldn't ban Nikolai. I wouldn't ban Claudia. I wouldn't ban any other players who makes illegal moves by mistake. Unless there's a pattern of some sort of cheat, you know, has Nikolai done this many times before? Uh, is there an angle to it? Is, is, did he do, do, make a distraction before he did it or something? But there's nothing of that. So maybe I'm missing something. Let me know in the chat if I'm missing something. Uh, to me, it seems like uh, people are going completely crazy and not understanding the real situation. But what do I know? I've just seen this uh, YouTube uh, live stream and, and that's it. I'll leave it up to you guys. Let me know in the, in the YouTube comment what you think about this situation. Am I right? Or is there something I'm missing here? So I'll, I'll be happy to, to see what you guys think. Take care, guys. Sleep tight.